welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall, shepherd of this far-flung flock that assembles regularly at this time and in this place to indulge in our mysterious devotions. While might may not make right, it can and often does make just about everything else. In a very real sense, the story of our alleged civilization is a story that has been created by armed men. Although the eminent Mr. Bulwer-Lytton may have said that the pen is mightier than the sword, it should be noted that he used a knife to sharpen his quill. And after all, when you come to think of it, our country, and practically every other country in the world, still spends more money for guns than for almost everything else put together. Any special orders today, Frank? Nothing. It's quiet. This should be one of them nice, peaceful days of policeman's delight. Yeah. I hope so, Frank. Anything wrong, Eddie? Well, is it possible to know when the last day of your life has arrived? No, it isn't possible. I got this funny feeling. Yeah? Right now, if I close my eyes, I see myself walking the beach. A guy with a gun is running out of a store. I yell, halt. He turns, he shoots at him. You want to go on sick call? No. I get this feeling every day. Eddie, you're the most sensible guy in the precinct. Just a crazy feeling. And it always passes. Except today. Except today what? Nothing. Nothing. I'll be okay. I know. I know I'll be okay. <laughs> Our mystery drama, Just One More Day, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Theodore Bickell. His name is Edward Mason, and this is the early morning of a very special day in his life. To each of us, there comes a final day. From time to time. A last day. A day which marks a divide. And today is one of those special days for Eddie. Because it is the last day that Eddie will spend as a police officer. This is the 9,855th day that Eddie has been on the force. And it marks a total of 27 years. Every routine act that Eddie performs today is something that he will do for the last time. Checking in. Standing muster. Walking his beat, making his reports, and checking out. But today, there may be one act that Eddie will be called upon to perform for the very first time in 9,855 days. For the first time in 27 years. Morning, darling. What are you doing so early? Oh, I heard you stirring around. Sorry I woke you. So I figured I'd come out to the kitchen and put up the coffee. Yeah... Oh, what's the matter, Eddie? Oh, nothing. Same dream, huh? Yeah, same dream. Mm. I've been dreaming that dream now for, I guess, for the last six, eight months. But it's never been so real. <laughs> you know what you ought to do with that vivid imagination of yours, Eddie? I'm sitting in Mom's candy store, eating a dish of ice cream, vanilla, with strawberry syrup. You should become a writer, Eddie. I'm aware of how creamy white that ice cream is. And the strawberry syrup is red, like blood. Maybe go back to school. Take a writing course. Usually you don't dream in such sharp detail, you know. And then there's this kid. He's maybe 17, 18. One of the local punks. His name is Tommy. Comes running in. Oh, Eddie. Eddie, it's only a dream. He yells, as a guy next door in D'Angelo's. He's got a gun. And I rush out of the candy store, and I hit the street. There's this guy with a gun in his hand, and I yell, halt. But he doesn't. He spins around and he fires. And what happens? I don't know. The shot. It's the loudest shot I ever heard in my whole life. Always wakes me up. Eddie, call in sick. Nope. Not on my last day. But you got the time off coming. Myra, honey, I'm going to put in my 27 years fair and square. Hey, turn on the radio. Let's hear the news. Oh, uh the radio? 
Yeah, the radio. Oh, I I can't. Why? What's the matter? It's uh, broken. It is? Mm Mm-hmm. When I was getting up just before, I thought I heard it. Well, you did. But it it, it just quit all of a sudden. Well, let me see if I can fix it. Take my word for it, Eddie. Come on, Myra. What is it you don't want me to hear? Now, Eddie... I'll know about it sooner or later. Well, I was hoping it would be later. Tell me what it was. Well, a cop was shot early this morning. A holdup in an all-night cafeteria. Who? Kohler. George Kohler. Did you know him? You know him, too. His father was the first partner I had on the force, Henry Kohler. He oh. hand me the phone book. Oh, okay. I think the kid was with the Southwest Precinct. Now, Eddie, I, I want you to listen to me. Uh, Southwest, here it is. Oh, Eddie, please, don't go in today. Eddie? Eddie, I'm afraid. Mara, take it easy. <sighs> Sergeant Rowland, I'm Patrolman Edward Mason with the 25th Precinct. About Georgie Kohler, I, I, uh... I called to see if he needs blood. Oh. Yeah, sure. Kid died an hour ago. Eddie. I think I better leave now. But you, you haven't even had your breakfast. Well, it been the last day and all. I want to get in early. Eddie. Watch yourself. You know, that's what you always say, and that's what I always do. You know, Eddie, I thought sure the captain was going to make a little speech this morning. About what? Oh, about this being your last day and all. Yeah, well, I asked him not to. I'll miss you, Eddie. I'll tell you. I think you're the best cop I ever knew. How come you wind up after 27 years just pounding the beat? I like the beat, Frank. You get to know the people, you get to be involved. That's where I disagree, Eddie. It's a job. All I want to do is put in my eight hours and get home. Especially now I'm getting married. Congratulations, Frank. Look at what she gives me for a wedding present. She says to me, honey, I want you well taken care of. (laughs) I must say an unusual gift, a revolver. How can you just call this a revolver? It's it, it, it's like calling the Mona Lisa a picture. It's a custom-made 38 special. That butt isn't mother of pearl. It's pure ivory. The engraving. It's a work of art. Feel the balance. Here, here, here trigger it. What do you say? All I can say is I wish we didn't have to carry guns. Are you nuts? How can you be a cop and not carry a gun? Cops don't carry guns in England. You're kidding. The cops there don't carry guns. So most of your criminals don't carry guns either. Look, Eddie, the very fact that you've got that revolver riding on your hip, don't it give you a a, a sense of security? No. Oh, come on. All the times in the past 27 years that you had to go to the holster, where would you be if there was no gun there? But I've never gone to the holster, Frank. Never. What? That's right, Frank. Never. Are you telling me you've been a cop 27 years and not once in all that time did you ever have to draw your gun? In 27 years, I never have been forced to fire a single shot. I can't believe it. You... You got an arrest record as good as any man in the precinct. Some of your callers have been real rough characters. And you say you never went for the gun? I never once went for the gun. Why do you bag half of these guys? (laughs) Been lucky, I guess. That has got to be the most single sensational streak of luck. And I only hope it'll go on for one more day. That's what I'm praying for, Frank. Just one more day. Hello, Tommy. What do you want, copper? What do you want, Tommy? Well, it's a public street, ain't it? No, not exactly public. It's an alleyway used as a loading dock for this warehouse. You got any business here? Well, I'm just uh, passing through. You wouldn't by any chance be casing the joint. Me? Figuring on maybe a little break and entry tonight. Would you stop me like this if I was a rich old guy? 
Now, you see, it's the poor and the downtrodden that get pushed around by the law. Against the wall here, Tommy. What do you want to frisk me for? I'm clean. <laughs> Not quite, Tommy. How about the ship? Well, I got to protect myself, don't I? The law will protect you, Tommy. Well, I'll just hold on to this and you won't be tempted to get into trouble. Is that all, Santa Claus? Why don't you go back to school? Get yourself an education. Are you for real? It's the only way, Tommy. <laughs> You're breaking my heart. Don't you want to get anywhere? No, sir, not me. Why not? Well, I guess I'm like you, Eddie. Where did you ever get? You put in 27 years and you're still a uniform cop. Now, I can understand it if you were making money down here. But you're too dumb to even shake down the, the storekeepers. Okay, punk, beat it. I understand you're retiring tomorrow, Eddie, and all you got is your pension. And you're telling me to be smart? I said beat it. Well, good morning, Eddie. Good morning, Mom. Eddie, maybe you better come into the store for a minute. What is it, Mom? I don't know. I got a funny feeling. You too? What do you mean, me too? What? Nothing. I was opening up the store this morning. You know, Benny's got the sciatica. Hey, did he go and see this doctor I told you about? Did he ever go see a doctor in his life? So I just put out the papers on the stand and this man, a youngish man, oh, maybe 30 years old, he picks up a paper, throws down some money, and walks away. What about him, Mom? I don't know. His face was familiar. In what way? Well, you know me. I'm always looking at the papers. I recognized him. Some gangster, you know? Gangster? Yeah, crook. A hold-up man. I seen that face in the papers. But I can't remember the name. Wait, wait. In what connection would you have seen him in the paper? Well, like, uh, maybe, uh... A man uh, that escaped from jail. Try and think, Mom. I'll try. But it ain't no good. You know me, Eddie. Let something once fly out of my head and wild horses couldn't drag it back. Benny, he says the same thing. But you know who could tell you? Who? This kid, Tommy. He eats breakfast with me here every morning. What can I do? The father's a drunk and the mother. Ugh. Tommy's seen him, too. So I says to Tommy, I says, Tommy, do you know who that is? And he says, no, I don't. But I could tell by the way he said, no, I don't. The answer was, yes, I do. Tommy, huh? Mm Mm-hmm. Maybe I can get it out of him. Ah, Eddie, don't bother with it. What do you mean, don't bother with it? Well, in the first place, he ain't gonna tell you. And in the second place, it's your last day. On your last day, please. Don't look for trouble. Come on in. Lucas, I heard you busted out of the slammer. How's your wagon? Let's get down to business, Jesco. That's what I like about you, Lucas. You're sociable. I called you because I need a wheel man and you're the best there is. I used to be modest, but <laughs> why fight it? You like plenty... Maybe 30 minutes. Tops. You get 25%. Of what? Come over by the window. Across the street. On the corner, you got a candy store. Next to it. See the sign? D'Angelo's Jewelry. That's it. You mean you want to knock off a jewelry store, a little neighborhood ice parlor? <laughs> Well, it's been great talking to you, Lucas. See you around, if the fuds don't bag you. What's wrong with it? What's wrong with it? What do you think he's got in there, to co in a diamond for crying out loud? All right, say you can empty him out. What do you get? A bag full of cheap rings and watches, and you got a fence every penny, and pennies is all a fence will give you. I don't want what's on a counter or on the shelves. Oh, what do you want? What's in a safe. He's holding half a million bucks worth of uncut diamonds. How do you know? He's holding them for some guys that smuggle them out of South Africa. Where'd you get the tip? The guy's in jail with me. Done him a good turn, so he gave it to me. And I know where I can get a quarter of a million for the ice. You're cut 50 grand. You want me to keep talking? I'm all ears, Lucas. 
What time you got on your watch? Uh, 8.45. Right now. The cop on the beat's gonna walk out of the candy store. Watch. See? Yeah. There he goes. He's gonna go in the jewelry store. See? And he'll be there exactly two and a half minutes. How do you know? I've been watching this cop eight hours a day for more than a week. I know every move he makes. I know where he's gonna be every minute. Now, that's good. Biggest problem you got on any job is a cop who comes blundering along out of nowhere. Don't you worry about this cop. He just ain't gonna be no problem at all. After 9,855 days on the job, will patrolman Eddie Mason finally have to draw his service revolver in the line of duty? The two gentlemen whose conversation we have just overheard would seem to be the type who could very well make him do it. I shall return shortly with Act Two. I am the master of my fate, says the poet. Not quite, answers the realist. And he would seem to have the best of the argument. The fact is, so much of our fate lies in the hands of others. Much of life is spent adjusting to or countering moves by other people. People who may neither know of nor care about our existence. Some of these may be good moves. Some are not such good moves. Particularly the ones being pondered at present by two young men who are peering out the window of a flat in a dingy tenement building. I have to hit the joint at exactly ten minutes to four. Why so late? At eleven minutes of, the cop goes into the candy store next door, and he has a plate of ice cream. I can even tell you what kind. Vanilla with strawberry syrup. (laughs) Oh, you gotta be out of this world, Lucas. Who could believe you? For the next eleven minutes, he's gonna sit there, fanning the breeze with the old lady who runs the joint. Then, four on the head, he hits the street... And waits for his relief. You got this all clocked, huh? It's the only time of the day I got 11 clean minutes. 11 minutes to walk in there, show the old geezer the gun, get him to open a safe, hand me the bundle, you're parked outside, and we're off. How do you like it? I'd like it fine without the gun. What's the matter with the gun? I hate guns. Once they go off, you can never tell who gets hit. Without a gun, if you get caught, a good mouthpiece can reduce any robbery wrapped to maybe three to five. But get collared with the iron on you, you're looking at seven to ten. Kill somebody, you're buried for twenty or thirty. All I want the gun for is to scare him with. Okay. You see that fire plug twenty feet down a block? That's where I'll be parked so I can count on an open space. I'll come barreling out of there. Have that engine running. Nobody ever complained about my work yet. Look, you're getting 50 grand for this. And I'm worth every penny. So I'll be waiting for you any time between 3.50 and 4 p.m. See ya. Hey, where you going? Well, I gotta steal a car. Nice little sedan. Okay, we got a deal. Yeah, we got a deal. As long as I don't hear no shooting. I am very nervous. I have been known to panic at the sound of gunfire. I forget why I'm there. I just hit that gas pedal and I fly. I said there won't be no shooting. How many times do I have to tell you? If you mean it, you only had to tell me once. Yeah, you okay, Eddie? Sure. 9.30 check-in. You sure you're okay? Yeah, yeah. I'll mark it. Frank, listen. Mom Feldman, where's the candy store? Yeah, what about her? She's not sure. She thinks she spotted somebody this morning. Who? Oh. She's not sure. Look, why don't you get hold of the latest wanted circulars and bring them down here? How about this one, Mom? Nah. Him, I'm sure it ain't. This one? Mm-mm. What about him? Hey, wait. Wait a minute. He's the person. Mom, you sure? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. In the picture, he got short hair now. And now, it's down over his ears. But I'd know him anywhere, any time, by his mouth. 
tight, pulled up, like uh, something's always bothering him. Jack Lucas. Yeah, busted out of the state pen six weeks ago. Armed and very dangerous, Eddie. Be careful. <laughs> I'm always careful, Frank. He always carries a big gun. Likes to use it. We better ask to have an extra car patrol the area. I'll tell you one thing, Eddie. You spot him, you want to shoot first and shoot fast. And remember. I remember. You see anything the least bit out of the way, call in. Okay, Frank. Thanks, Mom. My pleasure. Eddie, it's your last day. Why did you have... I have a job to do, ma'am. I remember reading the name. Jack Lucas. Mad Dog Jackie. And he's here, in the neighborhood. Uh, who says he has to be here? Maybe... Maybe he... what? Well, maybe he was just passing by. He could be miles away from here by now. Mom, he's here. Ah, Eddie, makes sense. Why would he be here? What's here? He's here, Mom. Why do you think I am wrong, Eddie? <laughs> if I tell you, you you'll say I'm crazy. <laughs> Eddie, you crazy? <laughs> it's impossible. Today is, uh, well, the only thing I can think of to call it is, uh, today is the day of the gun. The day of the gun? Ah, now what is this, Eddie? The law of averages, Mom. The law of averages suddenly realizes that me, Edward Mason, has been breaking it far too long. Ah, now that sounds crazy. I know. So today we have to have the day of the gun to make up for all the days we didn't have one. I wouldn't want to talk this way to anybody but you, Mom. Uh, Eddie, what is this about a gun? Wherever I turn today, I'm looking down the barrel of a gun. Last night, I dreamed about a gun. This morning, a cop I knew since he was a kid is gunned to death. Yeah, I heard it on the radio. I come to work, and Frank makes a big deal out of his brand-new custom-made service revolver. A gift from his fiancée, no less. <laughs> what kind of gift? All right, each his own. And now we have mad dog Jackie Lucas, who I think was weaned on a gun. Yeah, but what does he want here? I think he wants me. Oh, what kind of talk is this? Does he know you? No, Mom. And I don't know him either. Ah, uh, then what are you saying? I'm saying I got this feeling. I can't shake it. Just one more day. That's all I want. Just one more day. And I know, I just know, I can't have it. Listen, you say you saw this guy. Well, I... I could have been mistaken. Ah, uh, that doesn't help. If he's in the neighborhood, I have to know. Could Tommy have seen where he went? Could Tommy have seen? Yeah, sure. And I'll tell you why. Because when I asked Tommy if he knew the fella, Tommy went to the door and he looked. So, wherever he went, Tommy would have seen him. Yeah, thanks, Mom. For what? I upset you whole day. <laughs> How do you know it's Eddie? Oh, I was just sitting here wishing and hoping and praying you'd call. I guess it's what they call ESP. I just want to let you know, it's 12 noon and all's well. How do you feel? Just great. Oh, it's so hard to believe. You only have four more hours to be a police officer. We got to eat out tonight and celebrate. Mm -mm. We've been invited out. Yeah? By who? Oh, some old friends. Eddie? What is it? Um, I was going to suggest something, but I know you won't do it. Honey, you know I'd do anything for you. Well, I wish that you'd call in sick and come home right now. Ask me something else. <sighs> Eddie, watch yourself. That's what you always say, and that's what I always do. <laughs> Well, look who's here. Mr. Junior Gangster himself. Uh, give me a chocolate malt, huh? I, uh, owe you a buck and a half for breakfast, so, uh, just take it out of this. Where'd you get ten dollars? I lifted a guy's wallet. I almost believe you. When are you gonna get a job? 
Well, I may pull one tonight. Oh, was it going to end with you, Tommy? Eddie the cop wants to see you. Oh, yeah? Listen, Tommy. You remember that person we saw by a paper this morning? I didn't see no person. Do you know who he is? I don't know nothing. He is the one they call Jackie Mad Dog Lucas. I never heard of him. An escaped convict. A murderer. I can't prove nothing by me. Tommy, if a person like this is in the neighborhood, Eddie should know about it. A lot of things Eddie should know, but he's a chump. Eddie's a good cop. There ain't no such animal as a good cop. Don't you talk that way about Eddie. Was there ever a hungry person on this block? Eddie'd buy him groceries. And your own father. How many times does Eddie carry him upstairs when he's dead drunk? Why don't Eddie mind his own business and leave the old bum in a gutter? Tell me. You can't say that about your own father. Even if it's true? Believe me. Eddie's on your side. Hello, Tommy. Well, look who's here. All Santa Claus in a blue coat. Here, yeah, what happened to your whiskers? I want you to look at the picture on this circular. I'm oh, glad to oblige, Glad, You know, support the local fuzz all the way. That's my style. Look familiar? Of course. That's the person you and I saw this morning, Tommy. I never seen him before in all my life. Okay. You walked over to the door to get a better look. Who did? You did. Well, I... May have walked to the door because a good-looking dame was walking past. Which way did he go? Uh, which way did who go? The guy on the circular. The guy I'm looking for, Jack Lucas. How can I tell you which way you went when i never seen him? Okay, Tommy, have it your way. What do you mean, have it my way? What do you want from me? What am I, a cop? Am I supposed to go around looking for escape cons? I don't get paid to wear a badge. Why do I have to do your work? Maybe if you spent more time being a cop and less time hustling drunks out of the gutter and helping a bunch of deadbeats pay the rent and quit being big daddy and good old Uncle Eddie. Maybe if you spent more time being a cop, a real cop, you'd find him yourself. Now I'm getting out of here. What's a real cop? Tommy, sir. What they call a disturbed boy, Eddie. He doesn't respect me, Mom. Uh, don't say that. It's the truth. You are the best cop on the whole force. No. I'd be the best cop if I opened somebody's skull with a billy club or gunned down some crook. That's what he's been taught to respect. Eddie, he really looks on you as a father. That's no compliment. Well, just think. Tomorrow, you'll be a retired man. Yeah. But that's tomorrow. Meanwhile, I still got today. Just one more day. Long ago, a poet wrote, Be the day short or ever so long, It creepeth at last to even song. And the longest day for Patrolman Edward Mason also creeps reluctantly to its close. But before it ends, finally, a certain event is scheduled to take place. And looking at it analytically, there are three possibilities. A, it will be canceled. B, it will be postponed. C, it will happen. I shall return shortly with Act Three. A dream is about to come true for Patrolman Edward Mason. The trouble is, he doesn't know which dream. He has two of them. The first is that he'll be able to complete 27 years as a police officer without firing a shot in the line of duty. And the second dream is that he won't. It is now 2 o'clock in the afternoon of his last day on the force, and he has two hours to go. All 27 years are now compressed into two hours. 120 minutes. 7,200 seconds. And Eddie can feel the beat of each of them. Ah, Eddie. Mom says you wanted to see me, Jimmy. Eddie. I look at you. I don't know. Should I laugh? Should I cry? Well, do both, Jimmy. See which you like better. Yeah. I cry because 
27 years, Eddie. Where did it go? Search me. But I laugh. <laughs> because tomorrow you are a retired man. A free man. Uh, and then I cry. Because I lose an old friend. How can you lose old friends? Eddie, we're going to have a wonderful dinner tonight. Tonight? Uh, no, no. I think my wife said we were invited to... Sure, sure. We fixed it with Myra. There's going to be a big dinner in Clancy's restaurant for you. For me? Everybody's coming. Mama Feldman and Schmidt, the butcher, and Pedro and Jerry, the plumber. The whole neighborhood oh. is supposed to be a surprise. Oh, I shouldn't have told you. Don't ask me why I told you. Okay, Jimmy, I won't ask you. I don't know why I told you. I don't know what got into me. I just want to make sure you knew how, how, how everybody here feels about you. Huh? It's just, look, you're a cop. You understand. Any minute, some bomb, some, some gavone, you know how it is. I just felt I had to tell you. I understand. Uh, let me tell you the rest. You got to promise to act surprised when you get it, huh? When I get what? Yeah, I, I got it here in the drawer. Uh, it's a watch. Oh, hey, that's... Uh... See, see what I engraved on the back, huh? It's my finest work. To Edward Francis Mason, Eddie, a man of the law. <laughs> I'll put it back until tonight. Jimmy. What, uh, what do you got in that drawer? A revolver, Jimmy. What? Hey, I got a license for it. Why? Eddie, times have changed. I know, but you can't change them back with a gun. Nobody gonna come into my jewelry shop and hold me up. You wanna get killed? Jimmy, what's gotten into you? That gun, he won't settle anything. He'll maybe settle a few crooks. You show the gun, you force him to kill you. These animals today, they kill you anyhow. Believe me, Eddie, you're getting out just in time. You're not a cop for today. Promise me you won't do anything foolish. Uh, how can any human being make such a promise? Huh? Hey, Eddie. What's up, Frank? Nothing. Frozen in the neighborhood. So's Rogers. Anyone spot anything? Not a smell. Lucas is here. He's sacked up tight. I'll keep looking. Just think, Eddie. Forty more minutes. You're out of it forever. Why? Is it twenty after three already? As if you ain't clocking every second. I would say you're over the hump. Twenty after three. One more turn around the beat, and then I hand it over to Smitty. Between you and me, Eddie, I don't think Mom actually seen this mad dog, Lucas. But if she did, he was just passing through. Yeah. See you back at the station house. Okay. And Eddie... Keep your eyes open, huh? Uh, give me a pack of cigarettes, huh? Uh, Tommy. Hmm? You want to come to the dinner tonight? Me? Pay five bucks to eat with a cop? I'll pay for you. Why don't you get off my back? Uh, who's bothering with you? And don't ask me if I've seen this guy. Who's asking? Because the answer is no. You got a phone boot? Uh, right in the back. Thanks. Yeah? It's me, Chesco. I'm in a candy store. You set? You look out of the window with the black two-door hardtop near the fire plug, you'll see I'm set. Listen, I want to ask you something. Is there a chance somebody could have fingered you? What do you mean? I mean, your picture's been in the paper. You could have been spotted. No way. And what was the prowl car doing outside? When? Two minutes ago. The cop in the car was talking to the cop on the beat. Have they been talking about you? No way. You didn't say nothing about prowl cars. I thought you had it locked. I do. That was the 320 checkoff. What? 320 check off. 20 minutes after every hour, a car comes down the street. I told you. I know every move these clowns make. All right, I'm just checking. You make sure that motor's running and ready. And you make sure I don't hear no shooting. Hey, 
hot day, huh? Yeah. It's like yesterday it was winter, and today it's summer. What happened to spring? Don't ask me. What do you get for an ice cream soda? Forty cents. <laughs> I can remember when they cost a quarter. I can remember when I sold them for a dime. Forty cents, huh? But you get two scoops. Uh, give me a black and white. Ain't it a crime the way prices are sky high today? Yeah, where will it end? Beats me. Uh, Tommy. Hmm? I already paid the five dollars for Benny. I said I ain't going. I just talked to Benny on the telephone. He can't even get out of bed. Why should the money go to waste? I'd starve to death first. I'll see you, Mom. Uh, young people today. Yeah, no manners. Mm. We got a cop on the beat. Ah, such a wonderful man. I couldn't begin to tell you. We're giving him a retirement dinner tonight. And that one don't want to go. No respect. Hey, is that the right time on your clock? Absolutely. We said it by the radio. It can't be 347. My watch... My watch stopped. How do you like that? Never stopped before. I'll take it next door. We got a jeweler, Mr. D'Angelo. Uh, the man's a genius. Ah, Eddie. You're two minutes early. That your car parked outside? Yeah, it is, officer. You're kind of close to the fire plug. Got to be 12 feet away. Okay, officer, I'll take care of it. Thanks for telling me. Oh, you can finish your soda. It's okay. I'm on a diet anyhow. Uh, what a nice young fellow. The usual? Yeah, might as well. Go easy on the syrup, though. Eddie, I can't tell you how glad I am the day is over. Yeah, it's just about over. And I made it. And I am so happy for you. I made it, Mom. But I cheated. What are you talking about? It's like a pitcher in baseball who's trying for a no-hitter. You know what I mean? From baseball, I know nothing. Well, the first couple of innings, he doesn't realize it. But as the game goes on, he becomes aware of it. I still don't understand. The gun thing, I mean. It's become bigger than anything else. It would make me different. Give me something to brag about. Ah. Uh. Eddie, don't be so tough with yourself. This uh, escaped gunman, Jack Lucas, I haven't really been looking for him. Well, you don't even know if he's around here. We know he's here, Mom. But you see, my record is more important to me than my duty as a cop. I don't want to find him. I don't believe you. I've been going through the motions. I haven't really been looking. You know why? Because if I find him, I know I'll have to shoot. So I'm sweating out 4 o'clock, and 4 o'clock is... Uh, Eight minutes away. <laughs> Eddie, you want to finish your career without using your gun. Not just for pride. I know myself, Mom. I know you better than you know yourself. You want to prove that a cop don't have to be a, a man as violent as the criminals. Except he wears a badge and he's got the right to smash heads. Mm. How white the ice cream is and the syrup is blood red. Just like in a dream. What you're trying to tell everybody is, look, a cop can be kind and and understanding and a human being. I don't think I can eat it, Mom. Eddie, something the matter? Hey, Eddie. Yeah, what is it? Uh, you, you, you gotta... What do you want, punk? Uh, not nothing. You're gonna like the cop who's gonna walk this beat tomorrow. He's your kind of cop. Eddie... What is he? Don't say I told you. D don't ever say I ratted, but... But what? Next door. Next door in D'Angelo's. It's a stick-up. He, he's got a gun. Phone the station house, Mom. Help! 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 Or I'll fire! Eddie! Eddie? Yeah? It uh, was on the news. I heard Frank called me and, and the sergeant and Mom. Yes. D'Angelo. He's dead. Oh, no. You see, he was willing to give up the diamonds, but... But what, Eddie? He wouldn't let the hood take the watch. Oh. 
This watch. Read what it says. I know what it says. I killed the guy. I know. He fired first. That's what everyone says. He's 32 years old. Spent 12 years in jail. He had to end like this one day. He was searching for this day. He was waiting for it. That's right, Eddie. Listen, uh... I told the commissioner that since uh, I'm still under 50, I can put in 30 years instead of 27. All right, Eddie. They need me on that beat. You don't mind, Myra? I don't mind. They need you, Eddie. See what it says? To Edward Francis Mason. Eddie, a man of the law. Guys like you are few, far between. Nah, there's lots of guys like me. Guys who pray for just one more day. Well, just because I didn't get it, don't mean I have to walk out. I'll just start all over again. Just one more day. A modest enough request. There are so many days, so many uneventful days, so many dull days in which nothing happens. And yet, when Eddie Mason prayed for just one more of them, suddenly it became too precious a gift. I'll be back shortly. Because they come and go without effort, without notice, because one follows another swiftly and regularly, do not take your days for granted. Each is special. Each has its own meaning and its own place in the scheme of your life. Each one added to the other shapes the meaning of your existence. And hopefully, you will always be able to ask for and receive just one more day of whatever it takes to make you happy. Our cast included Theodore Bickell, E.V. Jester, Jackson Beck, Ken Harvey, and Jack Grimes. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Hello, my name is Matt, and today I was supposed to get married to the girl I love more than anything else in the world. Her name is Angela. See, we, we were all at my bachelor party doing shots, and... And then my buddy Mike, who I've known since we used to race tricycles together, whipped out some coke in the bathroom. I did four spoons and died right there in the stall. Cardiac arrest, they said. A heart attack. In the last second before I died, I thought of Angie. And how we had everything. How how she'd start a sentence and I'd finish it. Or how our hands fit together when we held and the day we fell in love and the dunes at the beach and, and that we cried the night we got engaged and, and how she wanted boys and, and I wanted anything with ten fingers and ten toes how it was going to be Matt and Angie Angie from the partnership for a drug free America this is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.